This morning, our reading for children's talk is taken from the book of Joshua. You will hear a very well-known story this morning, how the children of Israel took possession of Jericho, which was the first city, first place they conquered after entering into the land of Canaan. Now Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout or make any noise with your voice, nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you, Shout, then you shall shout. So he had the ark of the Lord circle the city, going around it once. Then they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priest took up the ark of the Lord. Then seven priests, bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns, before the ark of the Lord, went on continually, blew with the trumpets. And the armed men went before them, but the rear guard came after the ark of the Lord, while the priest continued blowing the trumpets. And the second day they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. So they did six days. But it, came, but it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early, about the dawning of the day, and marched around the city seven times in the same manner. On that day only they marched around the city seven times. And the seventh time it happened, when the priest blew the trumpets and it Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Amen. Let me invite children to come forward. Who saved the children of Israel from their slavery in Egypt? Moses did that. But unfortunately, the Lord did not lead them right away to the land of Canaan, the promised land. They had to stay and wander around in the wilderness for 40 years. And during that journey, actually, they were not left alone because the Ark of the Covenant all the time led the people and the Lord protected by pillar of cloud and pillar of fire. So the Ark of the Covenant became the most important item to the children of Israel. So during the journey, they set up the tabernacle and put it, the Ark of the Covenant, in the Holy of Holies. And later, when they enter into the land of Canaan, now they had to take possession of the first city the Lord has given them. What was the first city they took possession? Jericho. Jericho was the first city, but it was not easy. Look at this picture. They had very sturdy and mighty wars around the city. And the king heard of these people coming, the people of Israel. No one actually comes out, no one goes in. The city was securely shut in. So Joshua was wondering, how can I take this, this mighty city? But we know that the Lord will help him. So the Lord gave a clear instruction, this thing you will do, for seven days you will march around the city. For six days you will do it once a day, and the priest will be blowing trumpet, and the other seven priests were carrying the Ark of the Covenant. So they did that for six days, but on the seventh day, the Lord told him, you can circling for seven times, but at the seventh time, after blowing the trumpet, the ram's horns, Joshua will say, shout, 
and all the people they are supposed to make very great shouts at the top of their lungs. And the people did that. And do you know what happened after that? Priest blowing trumpets, and the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant. We can see some soldiers before and after. When they blew the trumpet and people shouted, then the mighty wall fell down flat, collapsed, crumbled. So just people entered right away and they destroyed. They took possession of this city. So this morning I brought out my special horn and I will blow the horn as a priest and I will say shout. Then you're supposed to make noises as loudly as possible. And let's see what happened to this building. <laughs> Can you do that? Are you ready? <clears throat> Now I'm going to blow the horn. Shout! I don't think <laughs> this can do anything. It's too weak. Can you do it again? Make it better this time? You ready? Let me blow the horn. It's very hard to blow the horns. <laughs> Shout! <laughs> A little better. <laughs> but nothing happened because this is the sanctuary of the Lord, the house of the Lord, and we are good people. So the Lord actually protects, and he is with us. We are not bad people. But when the people did that to Jericho, the enemies were there, the city war was collapsed, and the people entered and took it. And that was a very easy victory because the Lord helped them. But let's remember that. How did it happen? Even though they blew the trumpet, they made noises, but the most important thing they followed, they guided them was the Ark of the Covenant. What's in there? Why this is so important? Because it's made of gold? Not really. Ten Commandments, the teachings of the Lord. So we need to follow the teachings of the Lord wherever we are led by the teachings of the Lord, and we can crumble all the barriers when they are evil, and we will be successful. Amen. Please go back to your seats. Please bow your head for blessing. The Lord gives his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Amen. Our second reading is taken from the same book, Joshua chapter 7. So the Lord said to Joshua, Get up, why do you lie thus on your face? Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them, for they have, they have even taken some of the accursed things, and have both stolen and deceived, and they also have put it among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs from their enemies, because they have come doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you anymore unless you destroy the accursed from among you. Get up. Sanctify the people and say, Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow, because thus says the Lord God of Israel, There is an accursed thing in your midst. O Israel, you cannot stand before your enemies 
until you take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, you shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord take shall come according to families, and the family which the Lord takes shall come by households, and the household which the Lord takes shall come man by man. Then it shall be that he who is taken with the accursed thing shall be burned with fire, he and all that he has, because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord, because he has done a disgraceful thing in Israel. So Joshua rose early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken. He brought the clan of Judah, and he took the family of the Zaharites, and he brought the family of the Zaharites, man by man. And Zabdi was taken, then he brought his household, man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah was taken. Now Joshua said to Achan, My son, I beg you, give glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession to him and tell me now what you have done. Do not hide it from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and this is what I have done. When I saw among the spoils a beautiful Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold, weighing 50 shekels, I coveted them and took them. And there they are, hidden in the earth, in the midst of my tent, with the silver under it. Our further reading is taken from the work Heavenly Secrets, Arcana Celestia, 8391. Those who led the life of faith repent daily. They pay attention to the evils present with them, acknowledge them, or own their guard against them, and implore the Lord for help. For by himself, a person is constantly falling, but the Lord is constantly putting him on his feet again. By himself, he falls whenever his mind desires something evil. But the Lord puts him on his feet again whenever he resists evil and therefore does not carry it out. This is the condition of all who are governed by good. Those, however, who are ruled by evil are constantly falling. And they are also being raised constantly by the Lord. But he does this so that they will fall not into the most oppressive hell of all, to which if felt to themselves are their efforts take them only into a milder one. Amen. Here in the lessons, bless the day who hear the word of God and keep it. Amen. We need the experience of success. The memory of our success will help us when we go through tough times, at times of failure, and also the know-how we acquired during our successful moments will help us and will lead us back to next successful event and project. But this experience of success could be toxic and poisonous. When does it happen? 
after experiencing success, we may change our attitude or our work habit. Sometimes we become too much self-confident and we become arrogant and we may not put enough energy or efforts to the project, to the task we're working on because we think we can do it easily. So when we are elated with the success too much, it could be dangerous. So this was the case of Israel when they acquired, gained a great victory in Jericho because they didn't do much. They just marched around and the wall fell down and they got into that and destroyed the enemies. They were very confident and they were not really ready for the second military campaign. But they did that and they failed. After crossing the Jordan River, they entered Jericho. And Jericho, even though it was given as the first city, but it was a very mighty city. And Joshua, perhaps he was overwhelmed, but the Lord gave him comfort. And the Lord made it very clear, you are not doing it. I'm doing it. And you just do what I say to you and you say to the people. And the clear instruction of the Lord was marching around the city just for seven days. And at the seventh time of the seventh day, they're supposed to march around seven times. And priests blowing trumpets, a very important thing was carrying the Ark of the Covenant. And the people, when they heard shout as the sign, they made noises. And the city just collapsed, and they entered into there, and they destroyed all the enemies, and they took the precious things. But the Lord solemnly warned, you should not take anything. So if you find anything uh, important or precious, like gold, silver, bronze, they're supposed to bring them to the house of God, to the treasury of the house of God. The Lord said that they, everything there was accursed, profaned in Jericho. So you shouldn't take it personally. What a disappointing. Because in ancient time, when people got into the battle, the big prize was taking spoils when they beat their enemies. But the Lord said, no. But one person did keep the command from the Lord, Achan, to some of them. And that will be a disastrous mistake to the entire congregation. Think about Jericho, where it was located. It is right before, right after, from east side, Jordan River. So Jericho was situated in the broadest plain. So you can imagine the fertility of the land near the Jordan River and very open space. So they enjoyed the lush vegetation. And also the place served as the tra transportation hub. People crossed east and west, Jordan River. People traveled north and south they passed through Jericho. So it was a pretty good, nice city. And it represents, because it is very close to the Jordan River, which served as the gate entrance to the promised land, it represents instruction of the teachings of the Lord, but very simple and introductive teachings, perhaps Ten Commandments, and maybe some teachings in the Old and New Testament. But because the land was very fertile, uh, Deuteronomy and other places, it, they call the city as the city of palm trees, 
Perhaps they had many beautiful palm trees there. And palms served as the emblem of a victory and emblem of the Lord, especially the palm tree, the city of a palm tree pictures the first of life we need to know, which is the acknowledgement of the Lord and every goodness, every, everything good, every good thing and also salvation is from the Lord. That's the meaning of the city of palm trees. So it's a very, in a way, rudimentary, but it's a fundamental understanding and concept. We need to acknowledge the Lord, and also we should confess every single good comes from the Lord, and our salvation comes from only the Lord. So the Lord gave very easy uh, success and victory But here, think about the components involved in their victory. They didn't train hard. They did not invent advanced weapons. They just marched around, carrying around the Ark of the Covenant, following the teachings of the Lord. And priests supposed to blow trumpets. Trumpets picture the mighty power the dreadful power and strength of a divine truth. And when the people heard of it, they shouted, they responded. It is the confession of the same concept, importance of the truth, and the strength and power of divine truth. We can save us. So all this worked out nicely. They follow the Ark of the Covenants, the Lord teachings. Priest blew the trumpet that brought the presence of the Lord, people's confession. That gave them a great victory. But Achan didn't follow the, the strict rule the Lord gave them. This time you should not take anything. But no one knew about it. So they were ready. Now they are gearing up for our next project, military campaign, uh, taking position of AI. Joshua sent his spies, and spies brought back their reports. We don't have to bother entire army. Maybe we can send 2,000, maybe 3,000, because the people of AI are few. So don't bother entire army. Joshua sent 3,000 men. But what was the result? 36 men were struck at the gate of AI right away, and the people of AI chased the people of Israel, chased them down on the hill. Because AI was located on the high hill near to Bethel. So West Bethel was located and AI was located east side of Bethel. So it could be a very special place <clears throat> because we, <clears throat> excuse me, heard about what happened in Bethel. Abram, when he had a journey in the land, he set up the first altar in Bethel. And we know that later, Jacob, he spent the night there and he saw in his dream the ladder connecting the earth and heaven. Angels were descending and ascending and descending. So that's a very special place. And AI was located nearby. So AI might have a good representation, some knowledge of goodness, doctrine of faith. But more likely, it represents our knowledge from the word. So our life from the natural and earthly world could be all those theories, scientific discoveries, maybe social norms and ethical uh, norms and standards. 
and uh, all kinds of uh, popular theories, all this natural information, in a way, very important. And when we use them properly, they are very powerful. But when the enemy occupies here, the opposite correspondential meaning is put there. So here, natural light, all that information from the word do not serve to confirm our faith. And actually, it does the opposite, contrary thing. The people, even though AI was a small, the Joshua and the Israelites, they failed. In other words, they tried to take possession of this worldly knowledge. They couldn't do it. They couldn't use it properly. But that end up all that bad connotation. Why they couldn't be successful? Simply Achan took away a Babylonian garment and 200 shekels of silver, a wedge of gold. But these symbolic meanings, think about Babylonian garment, it was beautiful. In the word, when you hear Babylon or Babel, it has to do with uh, love of self. And the garment, we put it externally, so that represents our appearance, our manifestation of what we think, what we believe. So pretty much our words and lifestyle and our behaviors. And all that lifestyle manifests love of self. Because silver and gold, our understanding and our affections and loves support that lifestyle, serve as the principle for doing evil lifestyle. So as long as we have the strong connection, close connection with that selfish lifestyle, we cannot take back, we cannot use natural knowledge properly for the sake of confirming our faith in the Lord. For example, existence of God, like existence life after death, existence of the judgment at the end of the day. So they failed, and Joshua became very ashamed. He put his face, and he was very disappointed. And their hearts were melted like water. That's a literal uh, description, how the people felt after their failure. Especially after gaining amazing triumph, first time, very easily, just marching and then took possession of it. The second time, many people actually killed in action, and they very discouraged. And the Lord pointed out what went wrong. So Joshua called all the congregation, man by man, and he found Achan's sin. So after that, Joshua removed Achan, and all his family members, all his belongings. So he took care of that. And after that, the Lord told him, Joshua, now you need to go there, go up again, AI. But this time you need to use the tactic of ambush. We heard only Amalekites used it, but this time the Lord said that you can use the tactic of ambush. So he put many big body of men in ambush toward the battle. That sounds very good. And the rest of it, they were uh, engaging the battle, and they pretended running away. So people of AI are here again. They came to us. Now they're running again. Now we're going to go out and destroy them. They did that. And while the AI, the city was emptied out. The people who were in ambush jumped out and took the city, sat on the fire. So 
the people of AI were sort of stuck between Israelites. And that's how they got AI, the city. So this means we are returning back all those knowledge from the world, light of the world in a proper place so that they can serve for the higher purpose to believe in the Lord, to believe all the teachings of the Word, and to give us clear understanding and reason why we need to follow the teachings of the Lord, why we need to follow the Ark of the Covenant in conquering anything in the Word. Our life in the Word is entering and conquering the given land. It's in a way very tough because there are some evil people living there already and they don't want to give up. So we need to engage all the battles, the spiritual battles. Those evil people in the land indicate all the evils and false ideas in our minds, in our hearts. So removing them, defeating them, destroying them is part of our regeneration. It is a process, our entrance to the Lord's heaven, eternal kingdom. The first city the Lord gave to the Israelites was Jericho. That's a very fertile, very wealthy city, but it represents the first of life, we need to clearly establish, we need to clearly acknowledge salvation is from the Lord. And all goodness, whatever we do, actually comes from the Lord. We need that clearly first time. And then we are ready to move up to AI, to bring back all those natural knowledge all the civilization has discovered and has made and collected all that information and we can use that for the sake of the Lord, for the sake of our faith. How wonderful the power. But as long as we have a strong connection with some hidden indulgence of evil, secret indulgence of evil, and the lifestyle, we are very powerless. Because the Lord said clearly to Joshua, when you have Achan and that evil, I couldn't be with you. And I couldn't protect you. So their failure was very obvious. They were doomed to fail without the Lord's presence. So we need to remove that, and we need to detect. Actually, circling around, marching around represents examination. It's kind of, look at that, what's the possibility, and how can I take it? The people marched around the city. So we need to check our minds and marching around, see whether we have anything hidden evil, anything uh, false idea we are enjoying secretly, then we can be empowered to move on, to take down, to take possession, anything which is necessary. So here many things are kind of neutral, even the accursed things in Jericho, because the Lord commanded the people of Israel, bring them to the treasury of the house of the Lord. So all that knowledge and teachings out there depends on how to use them. So when they are possession of evil people, enemies, they represent all bad things. But when they come to good people like us, hopefully, we can utilize them for the sake of goodness. In this process, we can do nothing without the Lord. As we have learned from this story. But to be with the Lord, to have his presence, 
to make it his dreadful power, omniscience, omnipotence, available to our battles. We need to engage fighting those hidden evil and secretive indulgence of evils and false ideas. And after that, the Lord can be with us. And we need to follow the Lord, His Ark of the Covenant, His teachings. And when we hear the trumpet sound, your bell here, we need to make noises as loudly as possible. That means our confession, our acknowledgement, this is so true, this is so wonderful. And see what happens. Every stumbling block bothers us, bothers our entrance to heaven, will fall flat by the power of the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, and you who hope in the Lord. Amen. O Lord, God of mercy and love, you are the vine and we are the branches. Only in you is a spiritual growth, blessing and salvation found. Teach us your word and how to abide by your teachings so that we might be connected to our Lord. We ask for your help in humbling ourselves. Help us put aside our pride and arrogant attitude where we don't have much room for you. Open our hearts and minds to receive you as our King and the Lord that you may come and reign over us. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.